Frank Conroy Commemoration Committee held its first um, commemoration in 2012. And Paul, you played one of your songs at the commemoration and you have played every year since. Now, last year, 2015, you played uh, your new song about Frank Conroy. Well, actually called Frank yeah. Conroy. Could you yeah. tell me something about the song? Well, I, I, the ones we did in Kildare that time over at the square, um, I had a song written, Enemy Gun or something it was called. It was about the Spanish Civil War. But then when Frank Conroy's name came to me and I said I'd write one about him. And I did a different song, which was called um, something, I think it was a fight for democracy or something. And then I said, I sang that over there once in Boyle's pub after the heavy rain. You remember that day? Yeah. And um, I came up with this other song, The Ballad of Frank Conroy, which is um, the one I just sang there for you earlier on. And I thought it was more sort of, it was more in it, more history, for the want of a better word, about the man himself and about the, the, uh, the fighting in Spain. And uh, it it's quite a long song I suppose in a way isn't it? it's about maybe five or six minutes long I and hope it tells the story well yeah, it because does it is a bit mixed well he if he, he went to Spain in in in, in December 14th 1936 he didn't he didn't last very long because on two days three days after Christmas day I'm sure they, they were bombarded to hell and that was the end of Frank yeah, and that's so this year which is the 80th anniversary of the start of the Spanish Civil War it's also the 80th anniversary of the death of Fan Frank Conroy right, yeah. and I think yeah. the day he died there was eight other Irishmen died the same day fighting with him against the fascists yeah, yeah. Um, I think I read somewhere where a lot of I think most of most of the Irish fellows in that battalion were wounded or killed that day. Well, several killed, but most, uh, every one of them was wounded. So it was supposed to be a, an unmerciful um, battle or whatever, because they were bombarded from, from the air as well. They were machine gunned from the air. They were sort of, sort of hit with heavy artillery and stuff from the road. So, um, well, Frank Conroy was, of course, they buried him in Spain uh, in some small churchyard or near a churchyard on the hills between Cordoba, I think, and the place, was it Lopero or Lopera or something? And uh, as far as I know, his, his family never knew exactly where the grave was, so therefore they couldn't visit him or visit his grave, I should say. But... I think that in recent years they found the location where these guys were buried. Do, That's that right. right. Yeah. And I think this year, in fact, they actually put a, a monument up to the right. him yeah. and others. Their yeah. names are there. That was this yeah. year. But also about his family, like it would be it was a very unpopular thing to fight against Franco because in Ireland, which oh, was a right. Catholic country, the yeah. majority of people were behind Franco, mm. not knowing the truth mm. of the war. And in, in the North, in fact, the Northern Nationalists, who were mainly yeah. Catholic, were 100% uh, nearly uh, behind uh, Franco it, it, because they were Catholics. The Northern Irish people? Yeah, it, it was yeah. only as time went by, as you know, the rise of Adolf yeah. Hitler and yeah. things, people seeing what the yeah. fascists were like, that the tide turned. Of course, yeah. So for Conroy's family for many years, it would have been difficult. You would yeah. have to keep your head down. Uh, for, if, if people realise your mm. your son was like fighting with the devil nearly. Yeah, well, I, so. I, yeah, well, that's true, I suppose. But it, it's what um, what fascinates me is the the fact that these people they knew they were up against an army, if you like, a full army of trained army, like Franco's army with all the help that we're getting from the likes of the Germans, maybe the Italians, etc. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. the Irish on, on, the, on that side as well. And the English. I mean, they, were, they weren't on their own, but the, the International Brigade, if you like, were sort of uh, 
not as, as sophisticated, I'm sure, or trained as well as, for want of a better word, as the, as the fascist army. Just ordinary people who thought they'd fight for a cause, like the, most of the guys in 1916 here in Ireland. And women, of course, who, who fought in that. Well, the thing was uh, they had the election in, uh, in Spain in the 1930s and the left won the election. Yeah. Um, and what happened was the fascists, like Hitler had already started, and Mussolini as aggressive, brutal mm. leaders. And so uh, Franco in Spain, with the backing of the army, rose up to topple the elected government. And so, yes, so the ordinary people weren't really an army at all. And it was mm. very hard, yeah, to fight. That When Hitler entered the war, we've well, seen what type of a military power he had. Um, mm. So the people who went from all over the world, America and whatever, England, Ireland, they really were like a sort of a ragtag army. Yeah. It was just that the, a lot of the Irish, like people like Conroy and Frank Ryan, had been in the IRA, so they, they had a military training. So they were maybe better than, yeah. than many other uh, sort of people who volunteered. They were the French involved experience. in this, the International Brigade as well. The, the French, oh, yeah. uh, the English, yeah. they all fought. Um, and the Germans, the ordinary anti-fascist Germans, yeah, yeah. they fought uh, in, in obviously there. Yeah. Well, I suppose the reason yeah. I wrote the song anyway was to just to bring it all into <laughs> together as one little story because I mean it more more than if a guy just leaving Dublin to go to to um, Spain to fight for freedom if you like and nobody knows anything about him but when you get all the little snippets together and place them into that into that one sort of page that one song it might just tell that little bit more or make him more human rather than just a a, a, a a person who went to fight in Spain and nobody said, well, who was he or what did he do? Or but uh, another link actually in the Frank Conroy thing in, um, I think the second commemoration, um, a person who spoke was Sean Edwards and Sean Edwards' father fought uh, in the Spanish Civil War with the International Brigade. Mm -hmm. And it's only now in the recent uh, information they've discovered, like James Durney, he talks about when Frank Conroy left uh, Dunleary to sail, mm -hmm. to, you know, to go uh, on his way to Spain. He went with Frank Ryan and Frank Edwards, which was the father of mm. Sean Edwards. So Sh Sean wouldn't have realised when he's speaking at the Fr uh, Con uh, Conroy commemoration mm. that actually his father would have known him. But the trouble is so many of these people are dead now. It's hard yeah. to, it's almost, it, it's a bit late um, yeah. to, to uh, in that way, to well, find I, out the history of, of Conroy. I can also remember when I read the earlier stuff that they crossed the border from from um, France into Spain some of them by train of course some in trucks and others whatever way they got, could get, get there but without anything no they had no rifles no nothing they were they were marching down to this place without any arms and then when they gave them the weapons there were, I think they were stamped 1873 or something. The rifles that they got were made in 18, in the 1800s. And there were one shot rifles, whereas the others had the, the modern equipment of the time, like I suppose Sten guns and machine guns and stuff like that. And they gave them these old French, um, sort of for one of them, probably Gatlin guns or something like that, that used to jam every half an hour and then you'd have to get some guy in to fix it while you've been blown to bits by the enemy or whatever and there these guys trying to fix their their guns it just it takes a lot of it takes a very brave sort of person to to go against you know some major army like that possibly knowing that you ain't going to make it and you also wonder if say if conroy had it lived and returned to Ireland, what would have happened? Would he have become a, a TD for, which I suppose in those days would have been the Labour Party or something like mm. that? They were more on well, the left, I, or Fianna Fáil, possibly. Oh, yeah, but 
there you go. Because in the early years, knows, Stephen Fall yeah. were quite radical, yeah. so it is possible. Um, lots of them uh, became prominent writers, mm. trade unionists, stuff like that. Yeah. Well, we'll never know.